Good. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Dr. Ryu, and thanks for uh, clicking on to our video series on breast cancer reconstruction. And this is Mickey. Thanks, Mickey, for You're letting welcome. us videotape this. Um, she was nice enough to let us videotape the preoperative markings, and if you click onto that, you'll see it as well. As well as the um, entire surgery, which included bilateral delayed reconstruction with Allegra. Uh, Mickey's 56 years old, perfectly healthy, no medical problems whatsoever. And she was diagnosed with bilateral ductal carcinoma in situ with a 6 centimeter lesion on her right side and a smaller DCS on the left, which happened to have a focus of invasive infiltrating ductal carcinoma. So she underwent bilateral mastectomies and bilateral lymph node dissection, which were negative for lymph nodes. So she's a stage one uh, breast cancer patient. And we saw her six weeks ago for a reconstruction that was three months post-op uh, from her bilateral mastectomy. And uh, we ended up doing bilateral delayed reconstruction using tissue expander and alloderm. So we're now six weeks out. And how are you doing, Mickey? Fine. Tell us about your experience. How was it? Um, the surgery was very painful. Um, I was quite uncomfortable for two days. And then um, pretty uncomfortable for three weeks. Couldn't sleep. A lot of pain. Right. Some emotional trauma, yes. that kind of thing. Um, about week five, everything changed dramatically. I started feeling really She felt good. normal about mm -hmm. a month, five weeks yeah. out. And that's pretty typical. It's a very painful operation to go through. If you look at the video, you can see that we have to elevate the pectoralis major, which is the main muscle of the chest. If you do it on one side, it's painful. If you do it on both, it's even worse. So um, what Mickey's expressing is very typical. It's quite an uncomfortable recovery. and. Typically, four to six weeks is how long it takes to get over it. We also put drains in it, as you recall, and we took those out on Monday or Monday. Tuesday, on Monday after doing it on Thursday, so four days post op. And um, you were able to shower after that. Right. So it was an uneventful post op recovery as far as complication, but it was quite uncomfortable to go through. Yes. Would you say it was worth going through? Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. If I asked you the first week, probably you'd be gone. I would have said no. Exactly. <laughs> so it's typical uh, post-op uh, response. The, the first couple weeks, very sore. Um, and then at four to five weeks is when the patient feels normal and very happy that they've had it done. So that was stage one, delayed reconstruction. Um, today, she's six weeks out, so we're going to do uh, expansion on both sides. And she'll likely only need one expansion because she wants to stay fairly conservative in size and we already have 400 cc's per side which is a really good volume for her. Uh, it's thanks to the alloderm that we're able to do this. Uh, she had a non-skin sparing mastectomy uh, but we were able to get a good result almost immediately at the time of surgery. And in the last six weeks the skin that was in front of the expander has stretched out and has relaxed. So. There's plenty of room now to put additional volume in there. We'll go over how that works out exactly. But let's show the post-operative results first. Is that okay, Mickey? Okay. So Mickey's going to show us the post-op results. She's six weeks out, and um, the incisions are still a little bit pink, as you can see. Um, we planned them out pretty much where they did the mastectomy. The inframammary fold was an important step, as you recall. We marked that out preoperatively, and it's very, very symmetrical. It's very close to the midline, so the cleavage is really good. You can see it comes right to the center. So she's going to have a beautiful result. But she's lacking fullness up here, and that's why we're going to expand her further. There's 400 cc's in there now, and we'll probably put at least 100, maybe 200. Here's our pre-op views. Her frontal is right here. And you can tell, as we showed in the marking video, there's basically no breast at all. They removed the nipple. They removed a significant amount of skin. And there was no trace left over where the folds were. So we had to make them from scratch. So we were very precise in how we elevated the inframammary fold, as you recall from the surgery. If you click onto the video of the surgery, you can see that all this was carefully marked. And when we elevated the mastectomy, we went to and no further than the inframammary fold. This is the three quarters view on the left side and three quarters on the right. And you can see there was absolutely no projection, no inframammary fold, no landmarks to speak of. And now her lateral uh, three-quarter view is here, and then three-quarter view the other direction. Both very nice result, only at six weeks out. So let's go ahead and do some post-operative expansion. We typically wait six weeks 
before we do any expansion. We want to be sure that all of this mastectomy skin is healed because we opened it back up. We want to make sure that um, everything is settled properly before we go ahead and um, expand. Um, there's two types of expander we use. The most common one is the integrated expander, which would have a port right here, and we would locate it with a, a magnet pointer. Uh, in this case, we use a, a mentor spectrum, so the, the expander port is a remote dome right about here. So what we'll do is we'll access it with a sterile needle, and it's connected to a regular IV bag, as you can see here. It's a 0.9 sodium chloride, so the salt water solution essentially. So the port is right underneath the skin, and we're going to use this little butterfly needle right here to access it. So you'll feel a tiny pinch making right over here. It'll go right through, and I can feel the back wall, so I know that I'm in well. And we're going to do 50 cc at a time. So we're starting out, look over here. We're starting out at 400 cc, so we'll go 50 at a time. And you won't feel much the first few, but as we get past 100, it'll feel a little tight. Okay. And you can tell me to stop if you think it's uncomfortable. Okay. So you can see we started at 50, and I'm slowly pushing it in. I'm meeting no resistance at all, so I know it's going in smoothly. And what you'll notice is this lack of fullness up here. The ski slope will start filling up nicely on this left side. And we'll do one side at a time. It'll be a great demonstration comparing to the other side that still only has 400. So that's 50. So we now have 450 in there. Are you starting to feel a little tightness? Mm -mm. That's typical. Okay. The first few, there's really very little difference. To give you an idea, 30 cc's is about the size of a shot glass. So right now we've done just two shot glasses, which is not very much. And we're now going to be close to 100 when I finish this one. So that'll be 500 cc's. And I think we started out with that 400 probably being somewhere around 36B. And we'll probably just go to an average C in the end because you want to be still pretty conservative. The beauty of the expander is you can adjust it according to the patient's desire. Um, the technical limitation are obviously how much skin there is. So occasionally we have to limit the size based on the um, paucity of skin or the, the inadequacy of skin. But it, in this case, we're able to have very nice flaps that are smooth and pliable that expand really well. So there's really no limitation. We'll just have Nikki decide the final size. So this is the third one, so it's 150. You might start feeling a little, a little bit, bit, but not much. Great, excellent. So I think we can go right to the 200, which will be 600 altogether. So right now we put 150 in there. You can see there's three syringes of 50. And we start at 400, so we have 550 right now. And you can already tell that the upper pole or the top of the breast is a lot fuller compared to the right side. There's now fullness over here as opposed to the deflated look there. Are you okay going another mm -hmm. bit? Yeah. Great, excellent. And I probably will stop at 200 only because you really seem like you were very conservative so and if we have to we'll take some out if you think it's too big okay. before we exchange it or we could put a tiny bit more okay. so but we'll, we'll leave it at 600 for the next couple of weeks and have have that relax some more and then you decide okay. if that's gonna be the final volume and the choices are the great thing about this expander is that you can just take the port out and then leave it as a permanent prosthesis. Probably 95% of the time we'll exchange it and put silicone in it, and I probably would push you to do that, yeah, although you don't fine. have to. Okay. Um, alternatively, you could just take the port out and then have that as your permanent prosthesis. So you can tell a difference now. There's more fullness up here. This side has 600 cc's, this side has 400. And um, so what we'll do is we'll just inflate 200 cc's on that side as well. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Mickey, for letting us videotape it. And we'll see you on a future video.